strategy on how to set up your LinkedIn endorsements and your LinkedIn skills. And to be honest, this is probably one of the number one things that people overlook and they don't really think about it in a three-dimensional way. So if you look at my profile and I scroll down here, you're going to see a section called Skills and Endorsements. Okay? And you're going to see that I have four skills listed and each skill has over 99 people endorsing me for the skill. So to kind of cut through all the garbage, the reality is is LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn is going to show your profile around on LinkedIn. And I'm explaining it poorly, but I think my point is is the goal of anyone who's using LinkedIn is to get their profile in front of as many people as possible. If your profile is set up correctly, it gives you a good chance to generate traffic to your website and obviously um, you know, tell people a little bit more about you without you having to do any work. So as we look at my main page on LinkedIn, you're going to see this little section up here that says people you may know. In my opinion, you want to get your profile showing up on as many other people's profiles as possible. You also want your profile search engine optimizing as best as possible on Google. The way that's going to happen is you are going to have to have a substantial a number of endorsements. So when you go down to my profile, um, again, you'll see that I've decided to list just four different skills. And if you really go and click on these buttons, um, you can see how many people have endorsed me. And um, uh, for each one, it's, it's obviously well over 99. Uh, basically, they stop counting at 99 and just put 99 plus. Um, I have over 400 for social media marketing. I have over 600 for web design. I mean, obviously, it's it's quite substantial. So people always ask, well, how did you know? How did you get that many endorsements? What's the strategy? What should you be doing to improve your profile? So I think it starts with kind of understanding one. You do want to have a strategy when it comes to the endorsements. You really want to list maybe three to five different skills in that section. And most people, they think more is better because LinkedIn actually allows you to list 50 skills. So here's an example of a gentleman I'm doing some consulting for. And you know, if we scroll down to his skills and expertise area, he has decided to list the maximum of 50 skills, right? So he's got tax, finance, accounting. You know, all the way at the bottom, he's got you know tax returns. So the real and I was talking to him about this earlier. The reality is, is one of the biggest things that he focuses on is tax returns. And if we scroll down, we can see that one person here has endorsed him for tax returns. So think about it logically. If somebody came to your profile that was doing a little bit of a background check on you, and they wanted you to do their tax returns, and you saw only one person endorsed. Got, it had endorsed you for that, wouldn't you think twice about maybe using that person for that skill? So obviously, this guy is very good at tax returns. Okay, He's just not good at understanding LinkedIn strategy. So where he's gone wrong is having too many skills. And when you have so many skills, what happens is, is people don't take the time to sit and click every skill. They probably are only going to click the first three. See, how it works, guys, is, is people come to your profile and they will click to endorse you for those skills. Most people will, will click on between two to four skills and endorse you. If you have 50 skills listed, those other 48 skills are not going to get endorsed. Not because you're not good at it, just because people don't have the time to sit there and fool with it. So that's where the strategy comes into play. That's where you really want to have three to five skills listed in this section. And the, the more streamlined and the more strategic you have it, the quicker you'll follow in my suit, which is getting 99 plus people endorsing you. See, again, my profile has become the ultimate sales tool for me. I know when people are coming to the profile, maybe they've heard about me, maybe they've been referred to me, maybe I just talked to them on the phone, they're going to look in the skills and endorsement section and say, okay, 600 people have endorsed him for website design must know what he's doing. There's no doubt in my mind after seeing that this guy knows what he's doing. So you want the same philosophy for your business. Your LinkedIn profile is becoming your online resume. You've got to make sure it's set up right. 
and you've got to make sure that it grows like my profile has, grow, has grown. So today, step one is to go in there and to cut it down to three to five skills. Um, so people always say, well, what types of skills should I list? I want to list dozens of things. Right. I understand you want to, you do, I understand you're good at a lot of things. But for, for this specific strategic situation, you want to list two detailed skills and two broad skills. So here was an example, and I helped the guy who was more of a commercial insurance expert, liability guy for restaurant owners. These were the four skills we came up with him. We came up with two detailed skills, which was business liability and risk management, and we came up with two broad skills, customer service, insurance expert. So what I want you guys to do today is to go back into your skills section, um, click on the um, uh, click on the uh, arrow here, which will let you go in, and it'll let you edit all of these skills, delete all your extra ones, and just keep it at four, four you know, or maybe three to five. And I want to see you have two detailed skills and two broad skills, and that's kind of all it takes. And what will happen is, is if you have just that many, quickly you will start to accumulate endorsements. And again, the goal is to get, you know, as many endorsements as possible because, again, it's two-dimensional. One, it actually makes your profile show up more on other people's LinkedIn pages. And two, when the people go to your profile, obviously it looks a lot better. I mean, imagine if you were an employee benefit expert and I went to your profile and looked at the skills, and you had seven people um, endorsing you for employee benefits. I'm thinking twice about. I'm thinking twice now about doing business with you because why is why is that? Why does this guy only have seven? Just to me, it doesn't make sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is these endorsements have been out now for two years. So there's been plenty of time to accumulate as many, you know, to accumulate literally hundreds of endorsements. Um, and make no mistake, people are going in and they are endorsing you because LinkedIn kind of solicits you to do that. So I guess the summary of today's deal is, is go in, make sure you cut down your skills to about three to five, have two broad, have two uh, detailed ones, and uh, you know, you'll certainly be in much better shape. And if you're in there, you might as well go in and obviously take a better look at your profile and make sure it's set up you know, uh, pretty detailed. And I, I did in the past, I guess it was about uh, two or three weeks ago, went in and, um, uh, you know, did a pretty good webinar on setting up your profile and that strategy. And hopefully you guys were on it. And if you weren't, I'll, you know, just email me. I'll send you the link to it. Um, but I think that becomes phase one of LinkedIn, is making sure that your profile is set up very professionally. Everything is complete you know, where you used to work, where you went to school, uh, you have the three to five endorsements, you have your contact information, because at the end of the day, whether you realize it or not, when people are Googling you, your LinkedIn profile is coming up in the top three selections. They are looking at your profile, and they hold you accountable for that profile. So I, I think step one in getting to the next level is holding yourself accountable and saying, hey, look, if I have this profile, I need to make sure that I if I have this LinkedIn profile, I have to make sure that I put the time in and um, you know understand that people are looking at it. And you know from a from a positive standpoint, this is all good guys. People are looking at it. you need to you need to set it up so it's helping you get business. And like I said, I know when people go to my profile, absolutely, they end up doing business with me because my profile is kind of like that a plus paper. You know, and there's no reason you guys can't do that as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Next week we're going to talk a little bit more um, about the Facebook business tools. Um, we've kind of stayed away from that for the last three weeks. We've been talking about LinkedIn. We're going to transition back to that, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a good webinar. Have a good uh, good weekend, and I'll talk to everyone soon. Thanks again. Bye bye.